uh, roughly, this is Asia. This is where, and you know, more than Asia, but this is where I live in this travel hunting world. And as we go through today, we're going to move roughly from north to south, starting in Japan, ending up in Sumba Island. Uh, we're roughly going from the most developed and technologically savvy place, Japan, ending up Sumba Island, which is tribal, still very, very tribal. So Japan, then we'll go over to uh, Nepal, India, Laos and Thailand, and then three places in Indonesia. Volume okay? Okay. The hunt is always for beauty. That's the, the bottom line. So Japan first. It's funny, when I was 19 in university, I was introduced to Asia. And the two places that I knew I would want to go and want to go first were Nepal for a traditional trek with, with Sherpas and... and porters and guides and all of that. That was like a dream. The other place was Kyoto. The gardens, the culture. That was when I was 19. Um, I said I was a patient man. Uh, that was 69. Three years ago, both those dreams came true. <laughs> Only took 40 some years. And uh, you will see bits of these places. We're going a lot of places, so um, parts of this presentation will just be images, images, and part will be stories. So Japan, a deep, deep connection to Japan for some reason. Um, the respect that, that you find among people. Uh, everything has a place and an order. Uh, it, it has an astounding beauty. This is Kyoto. That's where I spend virtually all my time in Japan. I've managed to be there for cherry blossom time. That pink stripe across the bottom, that's, that's a river canal. It's pink because there's so many cherry trees along this river that those are just millions of petals covering the water. Another thing about Japan, in the service sector, which is everything from banks to servicemen at gas stations. Um, when somebody's taking care of you, they so respect your time, they never walk. There's this kind of Japanese trot that's even across a bank building to get papers from one desk to another, they trot. It's, it's, I could watch that all day. It's like no place else on earth. If it's a carpenter and he's going from room to room, trots, no waste. It's, it's beautiful. So a few images of this, the philosopher's path. This path uh, goes past um, dozens of temples and shrines. And I would walk it every day. I had to walk it every day. About a thousand years old. Um, in those walks over the last few years, at this almost this time of year, I'll be going back in a couple of weeks, uh, I got curious about cherry trees. And one time I was looking at these flowers really close and I look at the leaves. The, the flowers are going, the leaves are coming. I wonder what these taste like. So I looked around, nobody's watching, grab a big bunch of, of leaves and I ate it. And it was really sharp at first 
And then this burst of maraschino cherries right out of the bottle. And I found out later, this one week, they will use these leaves, these fresh leaves that just came out that day in desserts in Kyoto. So a few images of um, the Japanese gardens, which I love. Shrines. This garden, this is like the uh, entry garden for the Silver Temple, which has become my favorite. It's walking distance from where I always stay at my friend's house. I walked, the first time I walked into this garden, and when I saw this, tears just started welling up. And I went into the main garden, and I actually had to find a corner to go sit in for a while and just let the tears go. It's like, I'm home. I found home. I don't know where it comes from. I don't know what makes that possible. But the, the beauty is so intense and somehow so familiar and so wanted. Um, it left me beyond speechless. The, the gardens you can see they're, they're cared for. This, this cherry tree is probably 400 years old and it's just propped up so it can continue growing. Other images. You know, this is just what you find. This is so Japanese. It's, um, it's just beautiful in, in a non-structured way. It took a lot of coins to get uh, one on that rock. So a lot of the silver coins are mine. <laughs> Most of these pictures are, are in temples. That's, this is a, on a temple ground. So is this spectacular tree, probably 500 years old. In many of the... Mm, Many of the gardens and the temples, there is a, a restroom for visitors. And in, in Japanese style, everything is perfect. It's clean. It's beautiful. You're already in your bare feet or stocking feet. And those slippers are so you have something to wear while you're in the bathroom. And they're always just lined up. They're always cool. They're just a special place. One of my good friends there, he owns a restaurant that I frequent a lot. Um, the second year, he said, you know, you really need to go to my folks' house, which was about a three-hour drive out in the country. So one Sunday afternoon, uh, we drove out for lunch. And it was just a wonderful, wonderful day. The, uh, the tempura, four of the tempuras were, were picked in the forest behind their house. There were like 15 different vegetables that were used. It just... When you're accepted, the acceptance and generosity is just unbelievable in Japan. It has a funny side to it, too. For all the mm, formality, there's a, a zany side to Japan. Um, I bought a lot of socks at this sock store. And they're, they're actually sized by, you know, 10, 11. They're, they fit exactly but they're crazy. This is in a temple, but what fun. And out on the road. Of course, what got me there was uh, hunting. And how the best hunting happens is you wait for the, the ultimate connection. So from my main contact in China, who lived on the edge of the Tibetan Plateau, uh, we were talking about Thailand, and he said, well, you know, I'm going to be in Thailand uh, in six months. Meet me there. I'll give you three days. I'll introduce you to all the best people. Um, you'll be set up. Well, the three days turned into three hours, but it was enough for 
him to introduce me to the key people, this, these two brothers that had an extraordinary shop and a, and a huge reach into the community. And from 10 years of working with them, they had some beautiful Japanese things. And I said, I want to buy that screen. They said, no, it's too expensive from us. We'll take you to Japan. So you never give your contacts. So it takes being family for somebody to give you something as precious as their life, their business. So um, that was my opening to Japan. I'd waited eight years for that. But it happened. So th this, this thing of being a trader kind of uh, evolves. So Rhett was the man, he's an American, a South Boston Irish prize fighter. The last guy on earth you'd think would be out buying these exquisite, perfect Japanese antiques. Um, he has a five-story house. It's 10 feet wide, 28 feet deep. Um, the first floor is for the car and bathroom. And then it explores my guest room. Then it goes up and up and up. Land is precious. So these are the things that you get an idea of just finding, collecting, choosing. There's a first Sunday of the month market at one of the big temples, and that's, that's this. One of the great collectors that I go to see is Jiro. Uh, great history of this guy. He now has a restaurant. He goes to all the auctions. That's how I get things. If you go and buy things in stores in Japan, it's going to cost more than you can sell for here. So Jiro's one of the guys that Rhett, my main guy, took me to visit and does every trip. Character, when he was young, uh, he got introduced and involved in the Japanese mafia. In one, one day, you know, it's like, okay, today is your do or die day. And it's time to cut off part of your finger on your left hand. That's, that's the mark you'll always be part of us because you will, you'll, so bam, right then and there, you do it or you don't do it. It's like the samurai thing. He's no longer involved, but uh, you can tell a wild man. So I don't know what the connection with this guy was, but as we each time I go there and we go through the shop, he'd see what I was interested in just by how I looked at it. And he'd take it off the shelf and give it to me. And it, this happened like with seven or eight beautiful objects. And my rat was with me and he said, you know, this is starting to piss me off. <laughs> These guys never give me anything. <laughs> and here you walk in and I said, Rhett, we've talked about this before. I've been here for lifetimes. These guys, this, this happened in several shops. These guys know me, and we're, it's like we're reunited. You understand that. And we're old friends. And he said, no, you're not old friends. You are a samurai, and they're all terrified of you. <laughs> they're giving you gifts. <laughs> Keep you from killing them or something. Anyway.